Another report, well, not just another report, what I want to discuss in greater detail, the pros of putting your orchid into the middle of the pot, as opposed to the cons of how you see this orchid was potted up in 2019. I know, my bad. Lack of self-watering, this orchid has never been repotted. It is high noon, <laughs> more of that later, but the focus of this video is to show you why I will always recommend to pot your orchid up in the middle. I think this one is the best candidate I have so far. So let's get to repotting. And in the event that my audio cuts out because of the equipment heating up, let me just say there will be a voiceover. Because, you know, once you get started, it's like Pringles. Once you pop, you can't stop. So, it's good to have you here. I hope that this topic will give some insights as to this whole thing about potting your orchid according to the direction of the growth at the back, giving the orchid time to grow into the pot, well, in my experience, it is just, um, I would say, you do you, boo. I don't recommend it anymore. The first reason being, you should be repotting your orchids every two or three years, no matter whether you are growing in Lekka and self-watering or with bark. Because in the case of bark, wet, dry cycle, organic media will degrade. In my case, my orchid roots need aeration. So this is already way over the mark of me repotting this orchid. If I remember, I will tell you why I haven't repotted this orchid in all this time. And if not, then I shall put a ticker at the bottom. But the repots are necessary on a very regular basis. <laughs> so this whole thing about potting an orchid at the back of the pot to let it grow in, well, unless you're using a very, very small pot, in two or three years, your orchid won't fill the pot because you're repotting again. It doesn't even look aesthetically pleasing, does it? I mean, look at the gap. I'm just making sure it's in focus, but look at the gap. Like, really? Um, put this orchid into the middle <laughs> and it just looks a little bit better, not so wonky. Besides that, orchids, well, once they start to mature, they can grow every which way. And you might get yourself caught up within a year of having repotted your orchid up against the edge of the pot and whoopsie daisy, she's growing a new growth right up against the edge. Meaning another intervention in order to make sure that there is space for that growth to grow and roots don't grow outside of the pot. And then of course another reason, if your orchid is nicely pot bound, well, the roots that are growing in here with all this space they are going to grow so, so much longer, making the next repot, trying to get the orchid into the middle, that much more difficult because you won't want to be cracking any roots. So you see where I'm getting at. Mainly, it's the repot. <laughs> There's no point in working with a pot or an orchid and putting her up against the edge. This orchid has now been here in this pot since 2019. It is 2023 now. And has she grown into the pot? No but roots have, uh, that's lovely. And I think we're gonna get away with it. I don't have the roots that are gonna impede me from pushing her more into the center of the pot. We shall wait and see until we get the orchid out. I won't know. Now the pot is extremely rock hard. I don't wanna be using my hammer if I can avoid it. Ah, all these things. I just want to protect what is actually growing right now. And what is growing right now is right here, <laughs> up against the edge of the pot. So I'm only squeezing at the bottom. And I hope I can just pull her out. <clears throat> Not yet. The resistance I'm getting is from the roots that are stuck to the edge of the pot. So I've got my little handy dandy sharp knife here to make sure that I encourage them to release. And then of course the leka is already nicely attaching to the new roots, you see that there? So I want to make sure that <laughs> I keep taking care of that. So I remembered why I haven't repotted this orchid in the last four years. The reason being, 
every time I look at this orchid, because she's very close to my eye during the winter, except for the past winter, but anyway, in the recent winters, she's been extremely close to my eye indoors, and she always seems to be growing roots at a time of year where I don't have enough light, and repotting is not ideal because the hands get extremely cold. But, you know, to repot an orchid, we are introducing stress, and then if you don't have the conditions to back up and help the orchid through the stressful process of a repot, Repotting is best left alone and we try to do the best we can until we need to repot at such a time as this time of year, which is gorgeously bang smack in the middle of August. So welcome to this video. I went straight into the subject matter. I haven't even said hello. It's good to have you here. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to join me on the repot repositioning of my Dendrobium Memoria Christa Erdmann. Your support is so appreciated. If you would like to support the video on the channel, please give this video a like already. And if you haven't subscribed, please, please subscribe. I would so appreciate having you here long term. And if you really want to get down and dirty into the ninja orchids world, how about thinking about becoming an orchid ninja that is a member hit that join button and get some exclusive content in the background consider yourself welcome now you see what i'm getting at these long roots if i want to reposition her which i want to i am going to have two choices be extremely careful when it comes to putting her back into this pot which is going to be impossible because the roots are already, you know, as long as the pot is. And that makes the repositioning in the same size pot so much more difficult. So she has to go into a bigger pot, which is going to make her look a little bit ridiculous. But at least, please tell me I didn't snap a root tip, but at least I get her into the position that I want. Oh, please. Don't do this. Don't be mad at me. Wow. Okay, it's hammer time. And I'm gonna go the opposite end just to loosen her up at the bottom. That's why I'm feeling resistance and a little tap on her backside. And see if she'll give way then. I do not wanna go around the other side because all the roots are there. Let me try and get her without the support and see what happens. Oh, here she comes. Oh, it's gorgeous. Oh my goodness, it's gorgeous. Now, here we are. <laughs> I love it. <sighs> Happy days. Okay, I'm glad that my intuition proved me correct because of the positioning of the pot. And you know what I would normally be able to do? is just up pot this orchid. If she had been in the center of her previous pot, it would be so much easier. Take this root ball and move her into a bigger pot or even the previous pot and just put her in the middle, not disturbing the root system. But this is what I am getting at. This has to now, if I want to get her into the center, I have to get rid of some of that lecker but you can also see that my root network here, it's pretty firm. So if I had had her just in the center of the pot, this would be a simple up pot. Now I have a decision to make. Disturb the root ball further and get her into the center just because I want it that way or leave the orchid a little bit askew in the bigger pot and just fill around with Lekka. At least She's got <laughs> more space for the directions of growth that are clearly coming out this way. Even though my light training is helping the growths look like they are more centered in the pot, but they're not. You can see how far up against the edge this one was. So, hmm. Da -na 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 -na. Na 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 <laughs> Yeah, the roots are pretty tough. If I go and take all that lecker out and try to get them a little bit more, I'm gonna crack them. 
So, it does prove my point. In future, seedlings, mature orchids, whatever it is that you are planning with your orchid, I recommend to keep that orchid in the center of the pot so that your options for what you want to do when it comes to repotting her next, your options are wide open. Mine are limited and that is why all my orchids now go into the center when I can achieve that. Having said all that, my root system is a little bit more important. So let me address what I said about the root growth and this orchid. Having watched her grow her roots during the January months where it's really not, yeah, that's the worst time of year for me to repot an orchid, even if they're in active growth with root tips and everything. I always try to combat that happening by getting something done as soon as possible so that my roots don't grow that long, just to get in there quick enough without destroying new root growth. But seeing as she was much closer to me this time around, because my 15 centimeter pots are breaking, I also investigated this pot a little bit more closer and I noticed the new root growth and I thought, well, hey now, <laughs> that was a lucky break because I have to do something about my 15 centimeter pots. All the orchids that are in those broken pots, I have to address them. So I went around my collection and made kind of a list to check things out. Who's breaking? Who needs to get out of their pot? How is the root growth coming along? Can I intervene now? Etc. And this pot was fine, but I noticed the new roots and here we are. And I thought I was going to show you why potting orchids up to the edge of the pot to respect their direction of growth. It doesn't matter if you are in inorganic media or in bark. It really doesn't matter. Your repot schedule determines the positioning of your orchid. Unless if you have a very small pot and then of course the pot is full. But usually our pot sizes aren't that tiny. <laughs> At least if you're working with inorganic media, they don't tend to be that tiny. We do get a little bit of grace. As you can see, four years in Lekka and self-watering, the orchid is absolutely fine. I don't have really any dead roots to report, but especially in inorganic media, if you don't repot your orchids as regularly as two to three years, because in many cases it is not necessary, if you can keep your pots well flushed, put them into the center. They look beautiful. And no matter what direction of growth starts to pop out of the orchid, you're not limited. All right, let's get her into her new pot. Having said that, this has to come out. See or see. Whatever damage I'm doing in the middle there, c'est la vie. It wasn't that bad though. <laughs> awesome. This orchid is impressing me more and more. She was a gift from Luca Orchidin when I first went down the whole thing about Rapiculus Lelia and I wanted them all. So Luca was my first order. Memoria Crystal Erdman joined that order. That was nice. Never had a gift from a nursery before her and only Luca sent me a second Regentii in another Rapiculus Lelia order, which was so, so sweet, so thoughtful. Just one more point of reference, something I noticed and I always keep an eye on when it comes to repotting, up-potting my orchids is to see what lecker did I use? Small, large, always important because if the root system looks great, I want to repeat that status quo. And you can see here, 2019, I wasn't separating my lecker. There's clear, clear, large lecker in comparison to small lecker. So I just took what came out of the bag after cleaning it and I stored it all together. I have since moved on and I am since then sorting my lecker out into large and small. And for this orchid now, as she's growing bigger, her watering needs are going to increase. I am opting for only small lecker because when she starts growing, this orchid is super thirsty. And with that comes a lot of flushing and filling up the reservoir that we can avoid. The flushing we can't avoid, but sometimes the reservoir was empty while this orchid was at active growth and that is a no-no. It doesn't mean that the microfiber was dry. Who, but she's a thirsty one when she's in active growth. So we're gonna respect that. So I'm going to put 
the roots that are right here, right up against the pot again, because that's what they know. I'm just going to work my way around the back here, because that's where I want the orchid to literally learn to be in a different place. <laughs> I don't want it that high. So I wonder if my little layer down there is obsolete, but I think we'll be okay. No, I don't want her that high. You see, these aren't exactly proper orchid pots because they have the ledge. And what I do try to avoid is getting orchids up the pot too high. If they want to lift themselves out, okay, c'est la vie. By the time they've lifted themselves out, it's time to repot anyway. But I would like to have the opportunity when I pot these orchids up to get them a little bit lower. Also because of my humidity, you know, it boosts the humidity around the base of the orchid a little bit in my super dry climate. But for the fact that I don't want the roots to be circling on the rim here, not getting down into the media. So we're just going to lower her and I hope that that was sufficient right there. Still, bear with me, I'll be back. Here comes my third hand. Uh, that root tip is going to get a little bit bashed. Don't like that at all. That's why I put water into the pot and then fill with lecker so that Nova Lehman gets hit hard by this <laughs> rough and tough and solid material that lecker is. It's not forgiving when it bashes down on a fresh root tip. And the water allows me that little bit of leniency I can get in there. Now I've got a root that is crawling across the surface that was covered by moss. We're going to have to fix that. But first of all, it's about focusing on this side, getting the small lecker into the gap there. And now we can focus on this little root. Oh gosh. Yeah, you see how tough these roots are? Well, you can't, well, see, yes, but they are tough. They can snap, but it is an act of growth. So I want it to go down, not be exposed, because I don't want to be putting moss on the top again. I'd like to avoid that. While the moss is super helpful in the early stages, now that she has matured and gotten used to my climate, I've had so much humidity in the month of June that I've lost orchids because of it. And I am now moving a little bit more towards my bases need to be clean and free of moss. So I don't want to keep encouraging that. And now it's just a matter of making sure that all the roots that were covered by the moss stay covered, but also get the smallest lecker into the tiny gap, the little crescent shape that I have left here. Because I did not position my orchid in the middle. So I hope that while I'm fiddling around here, you see my point, how cumbersome that is. It would have been a superb, easy, quickie up pot without any problems at all, set from center to center. And even this now looks to me to still be very much up against the edge of the pot. However, the root system is more important. And if this helped you out in understanding why I'm saying what I'm saying, then I'm very, very glad that we got to this point, even though personally, I would prefer that it didn't. <laughs> so I don't want to be filling Lekka up here. Don't want to make a little mountain. I'm just going to cover it with the old microfiber until either the root hardens off or I'm back into a climate that isn't so warm and dry. And I'll just have to make sure I keep that nice and damp. How long am I expecting this to last? Should last three years, judging by her growth. She gives me two new growths per year, so that's this one and this one right here. So hopefully we'll get ourselves some gorgeous spikes in 2024. I had three spikes for 2023 and one was chomped off early spring by possibly a caterpillar that I wasn't paying attention to. But we managed to get two spikes out of her. And she has had a major calcium nitrate soak prior to this repot because, as mentioned, she now lives outdoors all year round, including January, February, March. I mean, I don't bring her inside anymore. And she handled those low temperatures very well, the lowest being five degrees Celsius. Better than I ever handled five degrees Celsius at night, I can assure you. <laughs> anyway. I hope that you got something out of this video, that you also saw a little bit of a fiddle, that you understand my reasoning. 
And well, if you have any questions or if you have any thoughts on why I said what I said and showed you why I said what I said, the disadvantage of putting your orchid up against the pot, if you have a different opinion, please let me know in the comments. It's always good to bounce off ideas off of each other. I appreciate your time. Remember to like and if you like, share as well. And if you'd like, please subscribe. <laughs> Have yourself a fabulous day on that one condition though. Please that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.